Hey everybody, this is Know Your Mac on YouTube.com and today I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own custom iTunes iPhone um, application icon using Adobe Photoshop. Now what I mean by that big descriptive name iTunes iPod iPhone application is basically just this little image right here. I'll zoom in on this, which is used for the symbolization for iTunes on the iPhone and iPod Touch. And this is basically like what it looks like. It's not exact, but it's my recreation of it. And using the technique that I'm going to be showing you, you can create things like this that I already have set up here. And they're especially great if you want to create an icon on your desktop which you can see in one of my other videos um, plus it's e it's very easy to do and you could also even use it if you're an iPhone developer and maybe you need a really good icon for the iPhone this is really something you could use so I'm gonna minimize everything here except for my original and I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can just because we only have 10 minutes of time because as you know you can only have 10 minutes of video on YouTube so I'm going to try to do this quickly as possible without getting off track so we're just going to create a new file and make it 300 by 300 pixels 72 dpi and it'll look something like this and what we first have to do is double click on our background layer and click OK. This way it's an edit editable layer. Now you're going to want to set your foreground color to black and then hold option and delete at the same time in order to fill your background with black like I have in the original. Now what, you want, what you're going to want to do is create a new layer and choose a foreground color. You want to go somewhere around here and I'll give you the symbol. It's 8 F E E E B and once you have that the only thing you want to really change is the hue. So you want to get a really nice color that you're comfortable with just like that and you're going to remember the hue so my hue is 237 now on my second color, my background color, you're going to want it around here at 18B5BO. Now as you can see, I'm going to use the same hue. See 237 here, and I'm going to make it 237 here. And those are going to be my two colors, that sort of purplish blue and that dark blue. So now I'm just going to take my gradient tool, change this to foreground to background normal, linear, and drag from top to bottom. And that's basically it. Now what you're going to want to do is go to filter, then distort and wave. And I'm going to read it off to you. You want to do 15 generators. The wavelength, you want to make it 5 minimal, minimum and 35 maximum amplitude 10 minimum 50 maximum scale 100 percent horizontal 70 percent vertical the type is going to be triangle and the undefined areas are going to be repeat edge pixels so let me just hit OK but it's still not really a sunburst like we have in the iTunes icon so you're going to want to go to filter then to distort polar coordinates rectangular to polar and the one last step is to go to filter then to sharpen and unsharp mask and you're going to want 70 percent amount 45 pixels for the radius and zero for the threshold and that's your sunburst so create another new layer and you're going to want to select your rounded rectangle tool and make it a radius of 40 pixels right up here no style 
and while holding shift you're going to want to drag that out to about right there that's good and try to send that as best as you can just like that okay now what we're going to want to do is take that layer and put it underneath our first layer our our shine layer or you can call or you can call it our sunburst layer whatever you want to call it and then on our sunburst layer you're going to want to click this little button which will create a layer mask but first hold command and click on that shape one so that way it'll basically create that now you're going to want to turn off the visibility on shape one just so you can see it a little better and now we're pretty much halfway there you're going to want to hold command and select shape one again take your elliptical marquee tool go to the top left and hold option and shift and then just drag it out and that will create our selection so now you're going to want to drag this down a bit and make sure your foreground color is white go to your gradient tool again and change it from foreground to transparent and then just try to drag it while holding shift to get the effect you like you may have to do a new layer first like that that's pretty good I like that well you know what? maybe I can make that a little better there you go how about that now hit command D to deselect and now we have to create the little icon so I'm gonna take my ellipse tool and while holding shift I'm just gonna create a circle about that big center it and then you're gonna wanna double click on that layer now under blending options you'll see that there's two options for opacity regular opacity and then fill opacity set the fill opacity to zero but make sure the opacity is still at a hundred percent now you can go to stroke and I'll zoom in here you're gonna set the size to 10 pixels you're gonna set the position to inside and you're gonna set the color to completely white now we're gonna go to bevel and emboss change it to emboss for the style technique is smooth depth 100% direction down size 0 and then just leave everything else the way it is and as you can see that basically creates it for us now we're just going to go into our custom shape tool and under shape we're just gonna choose any shape we like I'm going to choose a puzzle piece right here. While holding shift, drag it out. Center it. In the layer, you may want to double click on the color and just set that to white as well. And then what you're going to want to do is drag effects to your shape. This way, you have the same bevel and emboss, the same stroke everything that you just created is still there and basically all we have to do now is hit the little arrow say flatten image so that it flattens all the layers into one background layer go into image adjustments brightness contrast and you're just gonna wanna raise the contrast a little bit just like that and maybe lower the brightness one or two like that and that's your icon that's all you have to do to create stunning icons like these and you could easily use them for icons or application icons whatever you like I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you will subscribe thanks